there anything that you've done from an investing standpoint previously? Let's just do a real quick. I started trading at age 22 as I got back from Vietnam. And then it was a passion from then on. I'm 77, so that's how many years. I've traded everything except for futures, and I currently trade uh, options. So I've got a feel for what you need to do. You have to watch pricing, you have to watch the market, things like that. So I've got some background in uh, trading. Been trading, unfortunately, for uh, 55 years, I think. That's why I have gray hair. That's fair. Yeah, that'll do it to you. Obviously, you've had successes before, otherwise you wouldn't stick with it for so long. I mean, that's a long history of trading in different markets. I've really stuck to the U.S. markets. I didn't dabble outside of the U.S. One or two shares maybe in uh, China, Asia, but that was back in the 70s. I traded mutual funds because I did have a job, so I didn't have time to watch it as much as I did for the last 12 years. What really got your attention about Boss Financial and specifically, you're obviously part of Yield Wealth, our coaching program. What got your attention about this and sort of caused you to take the leap into decentralized finance? I wanted to get into a business. And when I looked at Yield Wealth being done anywhere else, they wanted to take possession of the money and basically you were turning it over to them and you didn't participate at all. And what you got was a dividend. That wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for a low cost startup too. And so when Boss Financial came along, I don't even know how I actually found you. Uh, you came up on my phone in November and I believe it was November 5th. And I said, there it is. My prayers have been answered. So I took the one farm challenge and it showed me that because you got to get started, you got to start up somehow. Yeah. And then in my mind, I see three stages. I said, you got to start the thing and then you've got to grow it. Then you got to figure out what you want to do with it at the end, collect some money off of it, do whatever. And you showed me that we could at least get the first part started. We could get it started up. There was consternation because as we started up, we had a couple of companies go under. And of course, Coinbase and Binance put in rules that you had to hold on to the money for seven or eight days. So it was very, very difficult to make a 10 day startup when the system was actually working against us. Yeah. We're fighting with legacy financial systems. They used to be a little bit more cloak and dagger about how they're trying to take us down. Now they're being a lot more obvious in terms of their efforts to take down crypto. Yeah. If you remember, well, we started, you were actually in Coinbase. I had a Coinbase account, but the money happened to be sitting in Binance. And so when we transferred some more money into Coinbase, they held it up for close to 10 days. And at the very, about the fifth or sixth day in, we finally ended up changing and going with Binance as the, the base feeder. You said you wanted to kind of get into DeFi, decentralized finance. What were you really hoping to get out of this? I was actually thinking of a legacy because I've got, it's coming up. I got them at 15, 14, 13. And I've also got friends that came out of the army and they haven't been doing well with being able to hold jobs, get jobs. And this is kind of a job that you might be able to hold on to. It's got flex hours. You work at home. You can be self-motivated, but still physically handicapped. I was actually trying to learn this so I could teach somebody else. What was it about boss that made you believe that this was the key to the next level? You sat down with your recorder and you recorded it so that it wasn't just you doing a lecture. You recorded it so that people like me that had to see it once and then go back and say, now, what did he just say? It made it much easier. You could stop it on a computer. You could stop the recording, go do it, come back and start it again. The recording, I think is the positive contribution to my life was that it wasn't a one and done where somebody sat on a stage and told us what to do. The, yeah. the recording helped immensely because you could go back even two days or three days later when you figured out that uh, you didn't understand what you're doing, you could go back and watch it again. How many farms have you built out so far? I have five blockchains going. My Velodrome is my biggest and I have 17 on that. And then I have five on Binance. I have four on Sushi and about six on Pancake. So you got maybe 30 or so farms somewhere in that range. You know, I've never added them all up. Bro. You got ample cash flow from these different opportunities. What would you say is your daily earnings from your different farms, from your different DeFi opportunities that are producing daily income for you? Well, I basically don't pay attention to Pancake Swap and Sushi Swap because Sushi Swap for one is Ethereum. And for you to turn that into a cash flow 
the cost of harvesting the cash is too great. So you basically have to go once a year on that. Pancake swap is more reasonable. I can pull that for about $6 a day and you can harvest every two, three days. Against all of the different farms, how much money about do you make per day? About, about $300. About $300 a day. Well, I know you're sitting there saying, Rich, you're about 10 times lower than my 3000 because that's what and about having a $3,000 daily income caught my attention. This is the, the amazing thing of DeFi. This is what's possible here. We're in a bear market too, man. Just wait until it's, it's party time. You're going to be amazed at what actually happens in a bull market. But first of all, that's amazing results. So 300 bucks a day, that's you know a little under $10,000 a month. I mean, that's substantial. That's impressive. It didn't all come the first week. You know, the first November and December were, were cloudy days. And when I finally turned a thousand dollars for the year last year, I thought that was a success. I really did. I thought at that point, I remember going for a walk saying, well, I made about $13 a day. That's a success in itself for the one yeah. hour I was out, I was earning money. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Then January came along and a couple of things happened. The overall market, uh, the, the. S&P 500, they stopped tanking and, and you can hold your own if the S&P 500 doesn't go down. You know, yeah. the, the overall market does have some influence on this. Yeah. When that finally stopped, I saw the leveling out of the variations because you'd go from $17 a day to all the way down to 12. And so then it actually came back up. And then at that point, I followed a process of, I reinvested every dividend there was in the man. <laughs> and, and I did it, I did it actually almost like beefy does. I did it twice a day. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause remember I got into your system, but I didn't talk to you or anything else for about two months. But you've taken advantage of the office hours, which has been great. You've been helping out now with those, you know, those live sessions, you've gotten value from those kind of weekly check-ins. Uh, yeah. I enjoy hearing people and we're all struggling on, but the, it's the airdrops that we struggle with, not the base farms. Yeah. Basically everybody can learn how to do the farming. We have a great team and yesterday was a perfect example. I mean, all of us tried to help some financial guidance, trying to get their system to work. How is joining boss and specifically yield wealth, you know, how has that shifted or changed kind of your own perceptions of investing and in any internal changes that you've noticed just from being part of this community? What are you capable now that you weren't capable of before? Well, after you started up Velo, you had never ventured off into the other blockchains. And so it wasn't until I went off on those on my own. So I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't had that base that you provided for uh, Velodrome. And I had all those open before I've joined you for the five challenge. Yeah. The and, uh, five DeFi opportunities and five day challenge. Yep. Right. That's what I joined on. And I honestly don't remember when that was, but it was probably February, I think. Yeah. But even though I had gone through all those other blockchains, some of those were even challenging. It's to a point that you don't give up too easy and you continue to check what you're doing. I'll be honest with you. The one thing you said one time early on was refresh the screen. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, this reminded me of Microsoft when it first came out. Yeah. You know, you used to have to save your file and shut it down and start back up. That refresh the screen solves so many problems. Yeah. Obviously, given that you have a lot of experience with uh, investing, how has this changed your kind of ideas around passive income and what's possible with, with decentralized finance and any changes in terms of how you approach this, how you think about investing, how you think about passive income? Yeah. I even quit trying to get passive income in the stock market. I've actually changed my philosophy there. I've backed off. In fact, I was just thinking about that the other day. I was thinking I should probably take money out of my stock account and put it into uh, my yield farms. But yeah, there's no comparison. Everything's regulated in the stock market from the point of view that it's very difficult to make an extra dollar. You do take additional risk. I mean, I understand there's additional risk in these yield farms and I don't downplay that. I was gonna point out to you that you helped with the startup and then the growing, basically you've helped that with the February uh, five farms. It helped me get to collecting quicker. Because yeah. I realized that I just remember when your video came out, you said, you got to be honest with yourself and do some collecting. And that was to pay your bills. But if nothing else, just say you collected some. And so I did that. I started collecting here in March. Yeah. So, 
it feels good, huh? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the next morning you get up and you're still confronted with, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> it's a good problem. Because now. you have to reinvest it or you move it. So, If someone who is thinking about giving Yield Wealth or Boss a shot and hasn't fully committed yet, what would you say to them? Call me and you can put my telephone number there. There's nothing out there like it. And it may not be there five years from now. It's, it's there today. Take advantage. I'm just not certain that the government's going to allow this to be out there. It seems too good to be true right now, kind of. Yes, sir. Well, you know, said it before, open source software, man. Hard for them to shut that down. Really hard for mm -hmm. them to shut that down. It can always go overseas and you can always use a VPN. It's not advocating for that. I'm just saying people sometimes do.